This is a Reconstructionist radio production with lrnteach.com. Please visit kuiper.org forward slash books to download or purchase this book. Christianity and Law, The Influence of Christianity on the Development of English Common Law, 2nd edition, 2010, Kuiper Foundation, Taunton, England, narrated by Nathan F. Conkey. Preface to the Second Edition The following essay on the influence of Christianity on the development of English common law was originally presented as a paper in the early 1990s at a national conference of Christian organisations concerned about maintaining the relevance and influence of the Christian faith and Christian moral standards in modern British society. It was subsequently published as a monograph by Avant Books in 1993. In the 19 years since it was originally published, the deterioration of the nation's legal and political institutions and the decline of the moral life of the people has continued to such an extent that we now find ourselves in a situation that can only be described as nothing short of a national apostasy. The declension of the nation from the Christian faith, which was observable throughout most of the 20th century, has become exponential at the beginning of the 21st century. On the 28th of February 2001, two High Court judges, Lord Justice Munby and Mr Justice Beeston, delivered a judgment in which they made the following claim. We cannot avoid the need to restate what ought to be, but seemingly are not, well understood principles regulating the relationship of religion and law in our society. We live in this country in a democratic and pluralistic society, in a secular state, not a theocracy. Although historically this country is part of the Christian West, and although it has an established church which is Christian, there have been enormous changes in the social and religious life of our country over the last century. Our society is now pluralistic and largely secular. But one aspect of its pluralism is that we also now live in a multicultural community of many faiths. One of the paradoxes of our lives is that we live in a society which has, at one and the same time, become both increasingly secular, but also increasingly diverse in its religious affiliation. We sit as secular judges, serving a multicultural community of many faiths. We are sworn, we quote the judicial oath, to do right to all manner of people after the laws and usages of this realm, without fear or favour, affection or ill will. But the laws and usages of the realm do not include Christianity in whatever form. The aphorism that Christianity is part of the common law of England is mere rhetoric. These words demonstrate clearly enough the degree to which our legal institutions are being secularised by contemporary judges, but they reveal also a formidable ignorance regarding the nature of English law generally. Is it really the case that the laws and usages of the realm do not include Christianity in whatever form? By no means. The law of the Church of England is still part of the law of the land. The Church of England as a whole and each of its component institutions are subject to a variety of laws, rules and norms, some imposed by the state, some made by the church with the concurrence of the state and others created internally by the church itself at national, provincial and diocesan level. The laws applicable to the Church of England are to be found in Acts of Parliament, in measures and canons, in a variety of rules and regulations, in the common law of England as revealed in the judgments of ecclesiastical and temporal courts, in custom, and in divine or natural law. The law of the Church of England is part of the law of the land. As Uthwart J stated in Attorney General versus Dean and Chapter of Ripon Cathedral, the law is one, but jurisdiction as to its enforcement is divided between the ecclesiastical courts and the temporal courts. Regarding English law more generally, we must remember that as late as 1953, Queen Elizabeth II, as part of her coronation oath, swore to maintain the laws of God and the true profession of the gospel, 
and the Protestant Reformed religion established by law. Constitutionally, nothing has changed since then with regard to the position occupied by the Church of England in particular and the Christian religion established by law more generally. Perhaps if the learned judges had quoted more of the judicial oath to which they refer and incorrectly understand as binding them to the principles of secularism, the inconsistency, indeed the absurdity of their views and the delinquency of their judgment would have been immediately apparent. The judicial oath requires those who take it to say the following, I do swear by Almighty God that I will well and truly serve our sovereign, Lady Queen Elizabeth II, in the office of, and I will do right to all manner of people after the laws and usages of this realm, without fear or favour, affection or ill will. Lord Justice Munby and Mr Justice Beeston have sworn by Almighty God to serve Queen Elizabeth II as a Christian Queen, who herself has sworn to maintain the laws of God, the true profession of the Gospel and the Protestant Reformed religion established by law. In what sense, therefore, does the judicial oath require them to enshrine the principles of secularism in their judgments? In no sense. What it requires them to do is administer the law of the land impartially as servants of Queen Elizabeth II. The secular principles to which the judges claim to adhere are religious principles that run counter to the religious principles upon which the law of the land is ultimately based, and in championing such principles in their judgments, they are failing in their duty to serve Queen Elizabeth II in accordance with the oath they have sworn by Almighty God. It is true, of course, that modern Britain has embraced secularism and multiculturalism, and there is a growing institutionalised antipathy to the Christian religion, evidence of which can be seen, for example, in perverse judgments of the modern judiciary, such as the one referred to above. But what this reveals is not that modern Britain is no longer a Christian nation. Rather, it reveals that modern Britain is an apostate nation. It is the purpose of this monograph to demonstrate that the aphorism Christianity is part of the common law of England is by no means mere rhetoric, but indeed profoundly true. National apostasy does not alter our history, nor in itself does it alter the Constitution, no matter how much our judges may like to think that it does. The answer to this apostasy, therefore, is not the secularization of our laws, but national repentance and a return to the Christian principles of justice that underpinned our law and guided the nation for so long. The text is substantially the same as that published in 1993. I have added very little other than to make minor alterations to grammar and correct a few typographical errors. Stephen C. Perks, September 2012 Christianity and Law The Influence of Christianity on the Development of English Common Law